Welcome to Fun Size Friday, where we have a fun size short story or article on a Friday. This week, the dice roll is... Six for fantasy and three for superhero and isekai. For those new, hi, I'm JJ Bartell, author, botanist, historian, and gamer. I try to cultivate greatness into books and short stories with a heavy focus on plant-human relationships. Why should you and I be concerned with the fantasy of superheroes and isekai? My thesis is that they are both sides of the same coin that can change your life. So drop a quarter for a comic and a yen for a manga, because we're about to go on a fantastical hero's journey. Now, if terms are defined, the problem is often revealed. In many superhero comics, you have someone living their former life. That life could be anything from pain to privilege, a drastic change occurs, so they can never return to their former life. They might be forced to live an entirely new life, but often live a double life. Their hero activities are an active choice, and it's typically a story trope that the superhero life interferes with the civilian life and vice versa. As issues continue, we, the reader, usually discover something internal about the person. Their courage, sense of justice, tenacity, and empathy that shows they are heroes no matter what. Parodies usually twist one or more of these critical components, like celebrating their ruthlessness or brutality. In some comics, the superpowers are not mutations or magics, but firearms. I wanted to describe a superhero comics correctly like this, because it's much the same with Isekai. In an Isekai, the main character is displaced by summoning or death, and is reincarnated into a different world. A god or some divine power from Earth or the New World usually allows the transfer. If the main character is summoned to a new world, there is usually a chance that they can return to their old lives, while dead characters have to stay in the new world forever. In many isekai, getting reincarnated by getting run over by a truck is so common that truck is one of isekai's biggest tropes. The memes are hilarious despite the origins. Like superheroes, the reincarnated person has a mental component that draws the reader to experience the new world with them. This second life is a second opportunity. Those that were cowardly or weak vow to be strong in the second life, or those betrayed vow to take revenge. There are many parodies, with some being so popular that the parodies now have parodies. In comparing the two, and as someone who has read at least 50 stories of each, my botanical brain can't help but notice that they are branches from the same tree trunk, so to speak. The western superhero is the optimist approach. Those main characters have the moral and or mental capacity to be heroes, and getting mutations, magic, or even firearms only increased their capacity to save the day. If a superhero comic goes long enough, there will be a powers lost arc. The person for a while will have no extraordinary abilities like their civilian life before. The character and reader will find that they will often be heroes with or without their super suit. The isekai is a more pessimistic take approach that people must lose their current life, often through death, to change meaningfully. Even if you have a second chance, a common trope is a divine power guiding your soul and that determines your next life. Some stories have people becoming younger versions of themselves with superpowers, which makes a nice power fantasy. Some second lives suck, with some stories forcing human souls into monsters, demons, villains, villainesses, or even trees. The tree one for me is a guilty pleasure. In a sentence, they are the heads and tails of a hero's story, with the reincarnated ones acting because of their fate, while superheroes act regardless of their fate, generally speaking. These stories do matter to everyone, not just strange niche people such as myself. As a botanist, I can tell you that plants have preferences. You will need soil with an acidic pH to grow blueberries or citrus. Tropical hardwood trees like mahogany will not tolerate freezing temperatures, while birches need the cold for their life cycle. There are many things in this world that you can't control. To grow a plant or a person, one has to cater to their needs and limits. If someone is more outgoing in their personality, sticking them in a cubicle for hours might not work. Someone that's more analytical than emotional usually won't find themselves having fulfillment and making art as their job. If someone wanted to cultivate greatness in themselves, 
well, like you, it would help to know who you actually are. All humans benefit from breathing better, eating healthy, exercising, getting enough sleep, and having meaningful connections with others. You can't stop breathing, eating, sleeping without dying. Basic human things will force you to live in a certain way. A successful life means considering the mandatory aspects of life and working with them, like a reincarnated individual accepting their new lot in life moving forward. Yet, as a historian, I know many ways to make civilization. The Incans, the Han, the English, and the Ethiopians are all in different parts of the world, yet they all managed to create their civilization. They did not need the same climate, language, religion, or law code. They didn't even have the same plants. These people decided to make the best choices that they could and make things work from there. Despite all the differences, families could have been made. Uh, children could grow up and lead fulfilling lives. These differences matter, not just culturally, but also on a more individual level. Everyone needs exercise, yet do you get your exercise needs fulfilled through, like, martial arts, dancing, basketball, baseball? Everyone needs food, but what do you eat? Do you eat ethnic food of your heritage? Something that's only exotic to you? Keto, paleo, vegan, carnivore? Sure, things happen to you, but making choices matter. If individuals make the most of their situation, they can change it. If a group strives to make good choices despite their situation, they could build an entire civilization. Regardless of the land, individuals rising to lead the people, those are heroes. Whether in the garden or the story of our own lives, there are things we can and cannot control. Learning to adapt to the things we can't and make the most of the things we can is what it takes. A wise man like myself, <laughs> One said, everyone has two lives. The second one starts when they realize they only have one mortal life to live. After that metaphysical reincarnation, what's stopping someone from, quite literally, becoming the hero of their own story? That's the end of the video. It would be my pleasure to see a conversation cultivated in the video or in the website down below. Yes, I do have my own website. You can visit it at www.jjbartel.com. Uh, you can also support me at my subscribe star if you would like to give even just $5 a month, which really makes everything a lot easier to do. And until next time, let us all cultivate some greatness.